In this video, I will demonstrate how I create a watercolor painting of a bird, specifically a house finch. But the step-by-step -step process and the basic principles I teach here apply to traditional drawing and painting in general. When we eat at our dining table, we observe many birds dining at our feeders. Many of them wait for their turn in the nearby pepper tree. After days of purposeful observation and hours of sketching, I proceeded to a more detailed drawing. I start with geometric forms that approximate the shape of this bird abstractly and proportionally. I indicate the direction and placement of the main body parts and tree branches. I say abstractly because at first what has to be done is to capture the proportions of the basic shapes that represent the body parts of the bird. For example, an upside down teardrop for the body and a trapezoid for the head to shoulders connection. If you capture these proportions correctly, the rest of the bird drawing will naturally follow and all its fine details will fall into the right places. As my drawing progresses, my lines become more and more precise. I usually don't fully erase a line. I lighten it and draw over it with a more detailed and precise line. What I look for is what basic geometric and abstract shapes compose this bird's body, how they are related and connected. Every part flows into another part. There is grace and beauty in that. I take the same approach to shadows and areas of different values. Lightly shading, I separate what parts of the bird's body and tree branches are overall darker than the others. That may include parts of the bird's body where the feathers are of darker color. Now that it is starting to look like the silhouette of a house finch, I begin to add more details. At this point, precision becomes very important. I concentrate on getting just right the kind of expression I'm envisioning. I do a more detailed shading, but don't complete it all the way because the watercolor paint will do the rest.
I pay attention to the size of the bird's feet as proportions must be maintained or it will not look right. Now that the bird drawing is nearly finished, I plan and draw the tree branches and leaves. I move them around to suit my composition. I like to capture the somewhat unpredictable way in which the leaves and the branches bend. The fact that no two leaves or branches segments are alike, and that they are never spaced evenly and at the same intervals from each other. The final step before painting with watercolor is to use masking fluid for all highlights and the lightest areas. This will keep the paper untouched during the painting process. In the Russian Art Academy, Watercolor medium is placed into the same category as drawing because to achieve darker values, an artist must cover the lightest value of the paper with more and more layers, be it pencil marks or watercolor pigment. That is why art schools in Russia teach pencil drawing and watercolor painting prior to oil painting. 50% of the success of an academic or any traditional style painting comes from the drawing skills of the artist. While painting this bird in watercolor, I think as if I'm drawing. That is, values are most important at this point and color decisions are secondary. This may be confusing to an inexperienced art student. I will explain as I paint. Just like in pencil drawing, I touch some of the darkest shadows first, which begins to establish my foreground contrast. I don't go as dark as I can, reserving those darker values to be used in the context of the whole drawing at the end. I'm not too concerned with the color of the first layer of any particular part because as I go over with more layers of different pigments, I expect the color to improve for a more subtle one. I choose a color that is close to what I would end up with. Warm shades for light parts, cool shades for shadows. To assure results that are pleasing to the eye, I use only those pigments that combine harmoniously. Not any blue and yellow pigments, when combined, produce a nice green. My watercolor palette is a result of experimentation, trial and error. I don't use any kind of black. It is one of the first rules of painting I learned in my art school in Russia as a child. 
All colors and values, even those that appear black in the finished painting, are a mix of the main colors I work with. I don't complete any part of the bird all the way yet. That has to be done after I paint in the background. Because colors and values are relative to each other, the same color can appear to look warm or cool depending on what colors surround it. The same red can appear to lean toward orange, purple, or even brown depending on what colors surround it. Thus, for a young art student, there is no way around experimenting with colors and no shortcuts. Concentrate on improving your drawing skills and your painting skills will follow naturally. This is why I'm explaining the theory here instead of actual painting process of this particular bird. In addition to being guided by a good teacher, most art students need to learn the theory, watch the process, and practice, practice, practice. In light of that, watch what I do with the tree branch. I use Prussian blue and a tad of praline maroon to tune it down, so it is not such a loud blue as it is out of the tube. It is still very blue and cool, but then I go over it with a mixture of cadmium yellow and praline maroon, the warm color I mixed for the light portion of the branch. See how the shadow color changes. It got darker, richer, and a bit warmer but maintained cooler shade than the light part of the branch. What happened is that, as I introduced the color to the light part of the branch, I inevitably gave it a darker value. And when I also gave the same color and value to the shadow, the light to dark contrast relationship was preserved. This is a good starting point from which, when more of the painting is completed, I can start comparing light to shadow, warm to cool contrasts, and decide what has to be darker or lighter, warmer or cooler. To separate the aerial space from the foreground, I use a wet and wet watercolor technique, so to avoid sharp contrasts. This play between colors and values represents the sunlight and shadows on the distant portion of the tree canopy, as well as miscellaneous objects like dry branches or distant ground. Now that I have all these colors in the background to compare the bird with, I need to strengthen my contrasts by emphasizing the colorful feathers and darkening some of the shadows. I also add finer details, remove the masking, and adjust the color and values of those areas. This brings my bird and the main tree branch more forward toward us. It emphasizes the three-dimensionality of the scene. I also soften the edges of the bird's body against the background, so it doesn't look cut out and pasted. The tail of the bird, for instance, has very soft edges, somewhat wet and wet transition to the background. This pushes it back into that aerial space, into the shadow. Painting in the leaves and branches breaks up the aerial space and contributes to the balance of this composition. It adds interest to the work and keeps the viewer looking and discovering interesting details. However, Overdoing it, putting in too many leaves and branches and sharper contrasts, can also be very tiring to the viewer. Thus, it is important to know when enough is enough. The darkest leaves read as leaves in the shadows but close to us in the foreground. Slightly lighter leaves will recede further into the aerial space. Also, cooler colors of the leaves will suggest that they are more in the shadows and warmer ones will suggest that they are receiving either reflected or direct sunlight.
I evaluate the whole scene and fine-tune it more. If anything looks too flat, I emphasize the contrasts between light and shadow. There are highlights, light, and mid-tones. There are core shadows and reflections. There are cast shadows, reflections within cast shadows, and on occasion might even be an occlusion shadow. I proceed to work on defining the nuances within light and shadow areas. Now that the bird painting itself is finished, I check my bird book for identification and spelling before signing it. I also add a couple of decorative elements. The finished product is a one-of-a-kind collectible greeting card. All the proceeds from the sales of these cards will benefit the very wildlife depicted on them. Visit my website, elenarocher.com, for paintings, drawings, greeting cards, and reproductions. Support my channel and wildlife refuge, El Refugio. The wildlife and I would also appreciate it if you like and share this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.